Hey folks, Steve Vai here, and uh, welcome to Thursday's Noon Under It All. Um, thank you so much for joining. Uh, had a great little session on Tuesday at noon when we did uh, Alien Guitar Secrets Live, where I usually talk about music-related things, and uh, a lot of great questions, a lot of cool discussions. And uh, you might have noticed that for these Under It All sessions, uh, there's a side to me that um, comes out that's a little different than what you might have expected uh, from tuning into a Steve Vai podcast. Most of the time, uh, people would assume that they're just going to get guitar, guitar, guitar. And sometimes they do. I love doing that. But as mentioned in the past, um, I've had a lifetime of uh, study in various esoteric principles and uh learned a lot from them uh well it's an understatement hey greg can you just turn the ac up a little bit it's a little warm in here and uh these uh these concepts that i'd learned started to flow into uh my interviews and the music that i make and I've seen some very positive responses. So I thought I'd create this section of uh, th this little, uh, these sessions, under it all sessions, where I focus on those things. So I will not be playing the guitar today, sorry. <laughs> I know that some of you came here just for that, perhaps. Uh, and uh, so sorry. Uh, you may find some value in this podcast. I'm calling it a podcast. I don't know what to call it. And. Uh, and on Tuesday, if you're interested, if you're really only interested in Steve I, the musician, uh, it'd probably be best to tune in on Tuesdays. But if you want to take a little adventure here, because I believe the things that I might talk about, many of you already are aware of and you know, but they could be uh, helpful. I found them extraordinarily helpful, vital in my ability to function not only very effectively as a musician, but uh, in the world in general. So uh, one of the topics that has come up through the years uh, for me, as far as people asking to discuss, is meditation. And it's a big topic. And I've had, I would say I've had uh, many thousands of hours of meditational experiences and study. And in this class today, class, whatever, I'd like to discuss some of these things. I want to discuss with you the concept of meditation. It's a big word. It's not as uh, weird of a word these days. You know, there's certain baggage that gets attached to words, and uh, we we create uh, we, we we kind of uh, put our perspective on these words. And the word meditation for a lot of people is is just different. Uh, but meditation is a vital practice. It, uh, I really feel this, and any practitioner of meditation or teacher will uh, confirm the in incredible, incalculable value of meditation. Now, when you hear the word meditation, as I said, it can uh, uh, evoke a lot of different ideas of what that is. And there's different techniques that you can learn to meditate and there's many fantastic teachers uh, on the web you can find incredible meditational practices lessons and concepts and whatever but in this particular podcast i'm going to talk about my perspective of it and how it may assist you so uh what is meditation? Meditation is the mastery of your focus. It's your ability to take your attention and focus it sharply and clearly without any obstructions. And this is vital in your ability to achieve anything creative. And uh, so, so there are different levels and different uh, 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 sort of concepts of meditation. And I'm going to break it down into two basic categories of meditation. And one of them involves um, the human aspect of who we are, which 
includes the things that we do in life, uh, the, 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 our, our actions, our uh, way of uh, our, our, our way of holding ourselves in life, our way of uh, moving through life, our way of communicating with others, the quality of the things that we create, the quality of the ideas we have. And this form of meditation is focused on the aspect of the things we do, the, the, the action of being in the world and doing. And this is the human side. The second level of meditation I would discuss, I would like to discuss, is focused more on the being aspect of who we are, which is of vital importance uh, and is the foundation, basically, of uh, any other kind of uh, meditation that we may engage in. So the being aspect of meditation is focused on um, of, of removing the obstacles within us to get to the reality, to the actual reality of who we are, what we are, and what our function in the world is. Uh, so I'm kind of going to go, uh, I'll go through these various uh, types of meditation. So you've heard the phrase, you've, you've, you've probably heard the phrase waking up. When a person wakes, wakes up or becomes enlightened. Uh, these are very uh, quiche words. They, um, they are catchphrases. But also, there's a depth to them when you understand them, understand them. And the waking up process that's taking place in humans, many humans, and in you, if you've decided to stick around and have an insight into it, what that means is what you're wait, what we're waking up out of is is the uh, dream of thinking. It's the dream of uh, thoughts. So. Within our mind, there's myriad thoughts that are constantly going on. I, I call it this, you know, and you can you can see this when you look in, you look within and you have your attention and your attention focuses on different thoughts. It, it shoots from one to the other to the other. And most of these thoughts are uh, based in your well, not most of them, all of them are based in uh, our conditioned thinking pattern. OK, and um, they're based on how we see ourselves, our life and, and these kinds of things. And many of these thoughts for most humans are very uh, fearful. They always involve future or past. And uh, this is the uh, th this is the congestion of your meditation. This is these are the obstacles to your meditation is the constant myriad thoughts that are going on in your mind. And the waking up process is bringing your attention out of the thoughts that are in your mind and into this moment. So it's kind of like this, and then it's just like a peeking out of, it's non-thinking. It's a state of just attention. And uh, this is a vital state to capture. And this is the purpose of meditation in all of its aspects, whether it's concerned with the being or the, do, uh, uh, the doing or the being. It's the escape of the incessant, chronic, usually negative and repetitive thought patterns that we've been conditioned and inherited and have practiced and expanded upon in our whole life, through our whole life. So, Meditation is an opportunity to discover true reality. <laughs> what does that mean? All right, I'll try to explain. Um, there's two kinds of reality. There's your reality, which is unique to you. My reality is unique to me. Every living thing has its own unique sense of reality. And what that reality is, is it's the way you see the world. It's your beliefs in, in what you are seeing and what you are experiencing. 
It's the, it's the thoughts in your head that create the reality that you are experiencing. This is very obvious to see when, when you look within and you're able to see that the way that when you look into the world, you're looking through your, your beliefs, your perspectives. So you will only see anything in the, in the light of your beliefs and your conditioned thinking patterns. And they are unique to you. The color blue is blue. It's your blue. I don't know what your color blue is, you know. Your uh, life experience, uh, are the thoughts in your mind are an accumulation of your life experience. And they're relative, but you, you, you're, we are creating them based on the conditioned thoughts that we're receiving in the world. And then we create an identity for ourselves, And that uh, is, is um, basically elusive thought patterns. Because the way any one person thinks about a particular thing is different than the way anybody else sees it. So our conditioned thought patterns are telling us about ourselves and it's saying things like, okay, so th this is, this is, these are part of the things that make up your personal sense of reality. It's the experiences in your life. It's how you view those experiences. It's like, it's the thought that, okay, tomorrow I have to do this. And the next day I, I have to figure out how to do this, but I need to figure it out now because if I don't, it's going to fall apart. And what happens if this, if this person doesn't deliver this, or if I can't achieve this, what happens if I can't achieve, what happens if I get sick? What? Okay. So the, the, these are thought patterns and they're projecting into the future, a fearful future, or they can project into a fantasy future, you know, which is basically an egoic desire to achieve something that you believe is going to bring you happiness. The uh, mental perspective of your reality is always projecting itself into the future to find uh, conditions or create conditions that will then bring you a sense of peace and happiness. <laughs> and it also uses the past. So in your mind is a unique sense of past, the things that happened to you, the people you knew, what those people did, uh, the things you've achieved in your life. You know, oh, I achieved this, so I, I, I know that I've, I'm, I'm okay, you know, because I did that. And also, I, I, uh, this happened to me, so, and then we create an identity based on that. You know, I am the one that uh, did this, whatever that is in your, in your life. And um, uh, just very quickly, for those of you joining us now, this is the Under It All sessions where Steve Vai is talking about meditation. Uh, I won't be playing the guitar and I may not be talking much music, but uh, so I was told I should make these announcements now and then. Okay. So your personal sense of reality, can, can you see how it's unique to you? Because every other living person has a different sense of that reality, a different understanding of what that reality, what reality is. But in, in essence, it's a form of pseudo reality. It's not true reality. It's your reality. And it's based on the thoughts that you're thinking. And those thoughts are what you see the world through. So you will be attracting things into your life based, because you'll be seeing those things that are Re that resonate with your beliefs, but this is a pseudo sense of reality. And this, the, the, this, the, this is also when I refer to the ego, uh, this pseudo sense of reality that we all have is an ego. It's, it's the egoic perspective. Now, the moment you say ego, uh, there's a, that's another word with a lot of baggage you know and uh some say well you know the ego is this and the ego is that and and you you need the ego and and all these kinds of things well i'm, I'm no judge of any of that stuff 
but I would say it's important to recognize the ego in you, the, the egoic perspective that sees itself, that, that, that is your personal sense of reality. Okay. Being able to come to the, coming to the realization that your sense of reality is relative is a great discovery. So the process of meditation is to eliminate or to go under or above or deeper than whatever this false sense of reality to true reality. Because true reality, uh, it doesn't change. It's, it's, um, it can only be discovered with the elimination or the looking under the false sense of reality. Because everything that you see in the world that's conditioned on the thoughts that you have are actually illusions. They're illusions of your mind. And when there is no thinking, because the only thing that creates your sense of reality is the past and future thoughts, then there's an opening to actually see what's there, which is true reality. All right, so... Check out some of your comments. Once again, this is under it all, where I'm discussing more esoteric principles. Okay, so meditation and some various forms and how they can help you. Okay, so meditation is the process of stilling the mind so that the incessant stream of conditioned thinking, conditioned thoughts, is just put aside. It's put aside for a moment. And you are honing your focus. You're taking control of your focus because your focus is who you are. Your attention, your intense attention is actually, um, it, it's actually who you are. And when you become a master of your focus, then your ability to be truly who you are as a creative, loving human, it, it, it rises to the surface. And this is the escape of suffering because suffering is the result of uh, psychological suffering is only ever mental turmoil, mental angst, which is brought on by stressful thoughts that you're creating that are illusory and actually not even true, but they're true to you. So to you, that's your egoic perspective. Your thoughts are real and they are true. But when you shut them off, you'll start to see more the illusory nature of your thinking patterns. Now, thinking, of course, has its place. And inspired thinking is your purpose. And meditation is uh, vital in discovering how to focus your attention so that the best of you the, the, your purpose, your function in life can uh, flows freely out of you in a, in a very enjoyable way. And it's all based on your ability to focus. We're sloppy focusers. And even with music, um, and I, I get asked the question all the time, uh, what are you thinking about when you're improvising? How do I improvise? You know, that, that's a big burning question for a lot. Where does it come from? How do I find it? You will only ever find your own true, uniquely creative, expressive, improvising notes even when you step out of the way. And what I mean by that is when you go beyond your egoic perspective, your sense of false reality, because your, your egoic perspective when you're performing even, is trapped in thoughts. And those thoughts can sound anything like, oh my God, what key am I in? Am I allowed to play this? Does this work? What is that guy doing? Boy, it sure is cold in here. Oh my God, look at those people, that person there. Oh, there's a cute one. Whoa, you know, and, and or I'm hungry. And 
why did he play that? And oh, he's better than me. This is all bullshit. Okay. And this is the stuff that congests your ability to find the opening to the flow of your creativity. And so now this brings us to the doing meditations. A lot of people feel, well, I meditate when I'm playing the guitar or I meditate when I'm out uh, in nature. Yes, in, in, in some respects, the things that you do when you're focused, it's a form of meditation because your attention is on the subject and it's, it's, there, there's, there's no obstacles. When you, when you watch a great athlete, that almost it looks like the the, 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 the transparent tra but poetry in motion you know uh they're in the zone it, it's called in the zone so you've heard that i call it the ultra zone and um you you do this and and people do it in various aspects of their life at times on certain subjects on those things that just seem natural and easy to them so um the, the key of meditation in the doing aspect is in the recognition of any thoughts that are obscuring your ability to stay focused. Because in the meditative state of doing, you're, you're actually connected to all of the actions that are happening around you and thoughts arise, inspired thoughts arise in you they're not mental noise in your head the little voice in your head that's constantly talking to you all day long <laughs> that's telling that's criticizing things that's in fear at times that believes that it's better than something else or is in fear of its own insecurities or uh is um these 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 voices that this is the egoic perspective and they will um always obscure your power your power so the meditative process in doing is in the process of putting your attention on something without thinking without the little voice that's always criticizing always commenting on and labeling things you, you you can you're talking we we talk to that voice all day we believe we believe that that voice is is who we are but what that voice is is actually conditioned thought patterns what does that mean conditioned thought patterns it's what you've learned and were led to believe is true about yourself and the world <laughs> it starts when you after you come out of the shoot school news culture that you grew up in certain things certain certain people say at a particular time that dig deep uh these are all these are all examples of things that come into your life that create your conditioned thinking every fact that you read about is actually a fact based on conditioned thinking it has its place but in truth it's unreal uh okay so how do you find that space of openness in the doing and you can see you can see in various aspects of your life and even in other people's lives when they're when they're in that zone when you see somebody that's performing uh, and they're just connected. It's it's when you're connected. Being connected, there's no there, there's no mental uh, meandering. There's only inspired inspiration that arises in you. That then turns into inspired thinking, and that's when thinking your power, your command, your focus, uh, you you own thinking. That's when you can start to own it, and um, enjoy it as opposed to being a prisoner in hell by it <clears throat> this is possible for you no matter whatever happened to you in the past or where you are right now this is absolutely possible matter of fact it's it's not only possible it's it's going to happen it has to happen
because it's the evolution of, of humanity is to reach this state of non-thinking awareness where all of the things that are, that are actually natural to you come through you. The words you speak and the actions you take when you are in a state of presence or that meditative state in your doing are all inspired. There is nothing that you can do in the state of presence that could hurt yourself or anybody else. As a matter of fact, it, the contrary is true. You're only helpful. You're only constructive. Any great creation, invention, performance, idea, thought, action, any unique, fresh thing that has come into the world can only come into the world through a human being when they create an opening in this meditative state of presence, because that's where the inspiration, your true inspiration arises. Uh, <clears throat> and just staying present, which is basically med meditation in your daily life in the, in the physical world, uh, will allow you to navigate through the world beautifully. And because when you're in that state, uh, you're connected to life itself. You're, you're actually connected to the, the energy that is life, the energy that's growing the trees, the energy that's holding the planets together, the intelligence that is doing all this, uh, the intelligence that's beating your heart. You're not beating your heart and you're not breathing your lungs. We're, we're not doing any of these things. It's all happening through us. The grass doesn't choose to grow. It just happens. This is, this is, there's a momentum of expansion that's going on and it's happening through you and you're a vital part of it. And the things that you create are a vital part of it. And the quality of the things that you create are di directly connected with your ability to allow them to come through you in an organic present meditative way this is where the joy of creation is uh, and also in this state uh, you are connected to that f flow of of creation uh you're connected to the creative impulse of the universe itself because that's what you are <laughs> um and also you, you can see how people, let's say, you, you know, people look for this state of presence in various forms because this is the only state that you can ever achieve that will bring you peace. This is where peace can be found. It's the only place. Peace is not in the outside world. Uh, it has, it's an inside job. It's there. You just, you, you just need to remove the obstacles to it to find its presence. And one of the difficult things in this is the ego uh, definitely doesn't want you to do this because it's the death of the ego. And it says things to you like, the hell is this guy talking about? <laughs> what does he mean, presence? What, is, what does that mean? You know, And it's saying things to you uh, like it, it might be listening to what i'm saying and being very critical and and imposing criticisms on it and that's fine but it's important to know that's the ego and uh but it's also um it's also important to know that all the things that you do that are of any great value come from these openings from the ego and if you see somebody, uh, sometimes uh, certain sports, such as you know, death-defying sports, like, okay, here's a great example of, of meditative action um, in the doing. I don't know if any of you ever saw this movie. I can't remember the name of it. It's this guy that climbed El Capitan freeform with no ropes or anything. There's two movies out on him, and I saw them both a couple of times. Uh, 
when you watch this guy climbing the mountain, he is absolutely and completely present. He has to be. His life is depending on it. And when you see him moving, it's like poetry. There are no wrong steps. Everything, even when he's reaching for his chalk, everything is completely moving in a state of presence. And he's completely connected with everything he's doing because he has to be or he'll be dead. <laughs> he's going to fall. Many uh, people find that sense of mental relief when they're engaging in a deadly sport, you know, or a dangerous sport because um, they have to enter that zone. They're forced into it. And that zone is in itself freedom. I call it the ultra zone <laughs> and more on that. Uh, I remember once, I'll tell you a great little story from my life. I mean, we hear stories of people who have done heroic acts uh, and they don't even know how they happened. You know, they, they're asked, how, how, did you, how did you do that? So how did you save that person from, uh, you know, uh, absolute tragedy? And their best answer is, I don't know. It just happened. It happened because they were snapped into presence and the, a, the actions they took just happened. That's how, that's how your inspired actions happen. You can't think about them. Uh, it was great. The other day I was watching this uh, little YouTube clip and it was this, uh, this mom and she had her baby on a table, little, little baby, infant. And the, baby, and the table was high. It was like this high. And she's changing the baby and she goes to do something and she has her back to the baby. And the baby's kind of rocking, you know, rocking around back and forth. And it's like, oh man, that baby's going to fall and it's not going to be good. It's very high. And the camera's right on it. And as the baby rolls off of the bureau or the counter, the little brother, the son, who was, I don't know, maybe four or five years old, comes running into the picture and catches the baby right at the last, the last moment, right on the floor. It, it, it was remarkable. And they interviewed this little kid and they said, how'd you do that? And basically he said, I don't know. I didn't even, I, I can't run that fast. I can't even run that fast. So this is a, an example. I, I give you another great example. This happened to me. This was kind of funny, funny story. I was at a party at my friend's house and it was a big party. and. Uh, uh, I was sitting at a little table, little table in front of me, and the comedian Ron White was there. We're, we're kind of friends, and and he was sitting right next to me. And on the other side of the table is my friend, who is virtually blind. And on the table is a big glass of wine, and uh, she had an ashtray with a lit cigarette in it. And these, there was a small table like that, so the stuff was right there. Well, no, it was like probably probably about like that. Yeah. <laughs> the fish was this big. <laughs> anyway, so she's, uh, I'm, I'm sitting there on the other side of the table like this and the ashtray is there and the wine is there. And I was just enjoying the moment. I, I, I was very present. I was just, there was no thoughts. It was just pure enjoyment of the, of that moment. And in an instant, my friend stood up very abruptly and the table, the table came up like this on towards me on top of me. And I was sitting there with my, my legs crossed like this, like I usually sit. And the funniest, the weirdest thing happened. I don't know how it happened, of course, but as the table came up, I found myself, this leg went up like this, this arm went under like that and grabbed and, and caught the ashtray, excuse me, <laughs> caught the ashtray and this hand went over like this and grabbed the wine glass right before it spilt and fell on all over me and the floor and everything. And this foot went up and caught the table. Okay. Now, how, how did I end up in this pretzel? You know, it, it happened that fast. And Ron White stood up and started applauding. Now, the reason why that happened so instantly and so uh, organically was because at that moment, I was just being present. I have no idea how. I couldn't have thought of it. See, if I was to try to think about what to do, it would have taken many 
if, if they could have even figured it out, many great people to sit around and postulate, okay, so if the table comes up this way, and then what happens if the glass goes this way? What if you grab it with this arm? And that you can't, that's the mind trying to figure, figure things out when in reality, there was no time to figure out anything. It just happened. <laughs> how did I, how did all that happen for me? I was just being present. I didn't have to do anything. It all just happened through me. And this is your natural state of being. And this is what you want to achieve. And this is uh, a great way to play the guitar too, or be creative in, in any aspect. So this is sort of the way of being, uh, I, I mean, of doing in the world in a meditative state. Uh, check out some of your comments. Be the table. <laughs> now that reminds me of a great story. Well, um, it's, I can't tell it. <laughs> Who built your studio? <laughs> okay, back to meditation. All right. Okay, so I would like to share with you um, some meditational practices that involve sort of sort of doing. Okay, there's a doing involved in these meditational practices, but most importantly, I gotta have some coffee. Can you tell I like Christmas. <laughs> okay. One of the one of the ways uh, that you can experiment with finding the present moment and the meditative st meditative state, and th these can be considered meditations. Hang on one second. I'm it's a little warm in here. checking out the Harmony Hut. Okay. I'd like to share a couple of uh, meditative practices that can be very helpful in clearing out the mental noise. One of the things that you have, we all have at our disposal uh, that can easily bring us into this meditative state of focus uh, to the present moment is, uh, is our senses, our ability to see, hear, taste, smell, touch. Uh, these, uh, these senses that we have, they're sort of like uh, translators of vibration, actually, like your eyes. It looks as though we're looking on something and we're translating. The brain is doing it somehow. It looks this way. Uh, vibrations. Our ears translate vibrations. Um, even colors and things in the world are vibrations. Science can even, you know, uh, that doesn't even disagree with that, I think. <laughs> uh, so when you put your attention, your sense of focus into your senses, uh, this is in fact a form of meditation because you're taking control of your focus. That's what meditation is, taking control of your ability to focus. So for instance, a particular type of meditation is in just using your sense of being able to see and putting all your attention into what you're seeing, which means just being present with the world that is immediately surrounding you. So here's the, here's the, the normal state, the um, defective normal state of humans caught in thoughts, future, past, Oh my God, I, I, I can't do that because of this, or I am the greatest at this, and what am I going to do with this? And, and then all of a sudden, you take your attention and you pull it out of the little voice 
and you bring it into this moment. It looks like no thought, just intense awareness. You can do this right now. Matter of fact, you can only ever do it in your now. <laughs> now, what you might notice when, when you start doing this, real life visual meditation, various things can, can happen within you based on where you're at at this point in your life. For some people, the things I'm talking about are completely alien to them, and that, that's fine. It just means you're not, there's not a readiness for it, and that's fine. But if you're under the belief that it, it's nonsense, then it, that's your ego. It's your ignorance, and that's not, a, that's not a, a diss. It's not my opinion. It's not my belief. It's kind of the way it is. So... When you're able to enter this meditative state of being present with your ability to look, various things can happen. As I was saying, for some people, there's just the thought, what is this? There's nothing here. This is bullshit. This is crazy, cuckoo, psycho babble. Uh, there's nothing here. I don't see anything. There's Sure, there's a tree. There's the, the computer. There's the camera. But so what? All right, that's, that's a very common reaction. But your belief that there's nothing there is still just a thought in your head. And it's an it, it's a, it's a egoic shield. But the relaxing of that and the practicing of non-thinking awareness, at first, If you can get past the completely unconscious aspect of it, meaning that it doesn't exist and it's all bullshit and there's nothing there and what is this guy talking about, um, I would tell you to turn in Tuesday and all I'll do is talk about guitar. <laughs> but for this, uh, some of you may catch a glimpse. Some of us may catch a glimpse of what that means to be thoughtless and aware. For a moment and then all of a sudden the mind comes in and it says well yeah that, okay great but i don't have time for that now or but what is what do i achieve by doing this you know you'll you'll never know you uh, what, what you achieve is everything but this is just the surface because this presence this meditative state of presence deepens and the it, it the depth of it is infinite because it's the depth of who you are as a conscious being. Because what you're applying to the outside world through your senses is your attention, which is what you actually are. You are, you are awareness itself. It's a very popular phrase. When you get it, you're going to start seeing it more and more, spoken by people who can express it very well and can teach it very well that who you are is actually your attention, not your body. <laughs> That's one of the discoveries, as I was saying a couple of lessons, a couple of episodes ago, uh, your ability to be present will deepen the more you do it. And it'll get longer in and of itself. And the discoveries, there's no way for me to really convey them because they have to be personal. You have to discover them yourself. And I started to, at one point, um, sort of give a little bit of illustrations of how that affected me in my life. And uh, I would just tell you to experiment with it and see how it deepens and how the certain realizations come to you as insights that then become inspired thoughts that are valuable constructive, creative, expansive, inclusive. One of the other things that can happen to some people if they snap into presence is they can experience great fear. 
They can experience the feeling of fear arise in them. And, and what this is, is the ego that is actually dying. Because when you cut through the mental noise, this is the egoic perspective, and you become present in the world, it's sort of the death of the ego, at least until you go back to it. If that happens to you, I would suggest that uh, you embrace it, that you allow the fear to run through you. It's not going to kill you, but you, it, and it doesn't feel good, but it's there. And it can become part of the meditative experience, but eventually it'll subside. Um, another great form of, so, so if you can imagine what it would be like to actually have your full attention in the world, in the depth of the things that are going on around you, which you, you start to see things differently when you're not labeling things. Uh, it, there's a phenomenon going on around us at all times. And uh, you, we don't recognize it because it's being obscured by thoughts that are um, conditioned. So another thing to experiment with, another meditative, uh, say I'll say practice that you can experiment with in the doing aspect is with your senses is I talked about sight. Uh, the other of uh, the bigger senses that we use quite often is listening. And this is something I love to do. It's fantastic, actually. It's a listening meditation. And what it does is what, the, how to practice it is you give your full undivided attention to just listening. To just listening very carefully to the world around you without commenting on it, allowing everything to happen not labeling anything. Uh, this is quite an extraordinary practice because it snaps you into the present moment and into presence. The moment a thought comes into your mind, you lose it. So see how long you can go listening without labeling or criticizing, just allowing. Um, I do this, I love to do this, especially at night, uh, before I go to bed, we sit in the backyard and it's relatively quiet. I mean, I will label some of the things that I hear, but as I'm listening, I don't identify them as being the label. So I sit and I just start listening very intensely and I may start hearing the birds. But there is so much going on the deeper you listen. Sounds come. It might be an airplane. It's fine. I'm, you don't complain about the fact that there's an airplane. It's just that it's, it's part of the composition. There might be a little freeway noise in the background. There may be a rustle or bustle over there. There might be um, whatever it is. Somebody may say something. You may hear words. There might be something in the distance. But the deeper you listen, the deeper the experience of being presence becomes and you realize that there's this infinite symphony that's being created around you at all times and it's it's perfect it's perfectly abstract it doesn't repeat itself ever 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 it's as if uh, if, if i was talking in terms of time it's as if the entire universe has conspired since the Big Bang, since its birth, to bring you this very moment right here. And in these meditative states of, let's say, listening, it, there's a phenomenon of depth going on around you that you can hear. It's like a symphony. I call it the symphony of life. It's completely abstract and perfect and it never repeats itself and it's there for you right now so let's let's just take a, a moment just a moment and practice this it's sort of a guided meditation so what you're going to do is 
and always a good practice, always a good practice before you engage in any kind of meditative practice is to get comfortable and relax your body. You relax your body um, from the inside. And you just kind of let, let all the tension kind of melt away. And then you listen really intensely. So I'll describe some of the things I'm hearing, but I'm not labeling them in my head when I'm listening. You know, Greg is rustling in the other room, setting a few things up, and all the sounds that are coming out from him, they're like musical notes. It's a little bit of wind going on in the background from the air conditioner. But the studio is pretty peaceful. It's a beautiful place to truly relax into the present moment because there's not a lot of distractions and not a lot of noise. But I, I really enjoy doing this practice when I'm uh, getting ready to go to bed at night because it's kind of interesting. If you hold on, if you can hold on to the deep aspect of just listening intensely, you just start noticing these things, the droplets of water. They all have pitches and, and they're all creating that, that in conjunction with the sound of the, the, the a door opening or you know, there, there's this symphony going on. If somebody says something and you're, you're, you listen to what they say and the words, uh, you know, they, they, they come at you clean. You know, your reaction, you can, you can actually react in this state. You can react in any of these meditative states in the doing aspect. But your reactions are going to be pure. They're going to be inspired. They're going to be it, it, based on your unique personality. They could be funny. You know, they could be very witty and humorous. They could be profound, but they are always uh, of a high quality when in this state. Another way to uh, practice this sort of presence with me meditative practice in your daily life in the doing is in anything that you're doing, in, in putting your attention Full, and by the way, the, the, the ability to listen deeply only gets deeper the, the more you're able to hold on to the presence. Same thing with your ability to look into the world. And the moment that you're listening and you're starting to get really deep and it's starting to have dimension to it, the mind might even say, oh, that's beautiful. And the moment the mind says that, you're not doing it anymore. You've lost it. You're actually in the past. It becomes a memory. So the, 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 the ability to hold, hold the focus, hold the focus, that's meditation. And the more you do it, the more of a boss you become over your own life. And the more that you can, the more you can experience life in a joyful way. So other ways to do this, I mean, you take something like simple actions that you do, like um, brushing your teeth or taking a shower. Most people, uh, you know, when they take a shower or brush their teeth, it's just a, it's just, it's, it's just something they do. And their mind is thinking about the next day or what happened the day before, or it's not in actually the action of what you're doing at that moment. But I encourage you to experiment with giving whatever you're doing your full attention. So, for instance, if you're taking a shower, you're, you're, you're actually feeling the water. You're, you're, you're smelling the soap. You're, you, you, and most people don't, know, don't feel the water. They, I mean, you can feel it, but if you give your full attention to it, it's phenomenal what it actually feels like to, to, to have that, you know, to have it running down your face, running down your body and the top of your head, and, and then what it feels like to actually clean your body and give it give give that the full attention every action you take has a quality in it when you give it your attention i love you know when i'm brushing my teeth even it sounds crazy it sounds crazy but this it's real when i'm brushing my teeth i have a personal relationship with every tooth <laughs> uh, 
And it's lovely. It's fantastic. The toothbrush knows exactly where to go. Steve Vai gets the heck out of the way. And it just happens. And by putting my attention on it, it's, you notice it's very joyful. It, there's something very simple and, 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 and um, comfortable in it. And you, you, you enjoy it. There's an appreciation. And your teeth love it when you give them attention. This is how they stay healthy. Um, and uh, I love to pack. I used to hate packing and unpacking. And God, do I had to, I had to do it a lot. But now I take every step in presence and it's enjoyable. It's just enjoyable. You know, you fold things this way. You almost feel when you're, when you're, when you're, you're giving something your full attention and you're being patient, you're not trying to get it finished so that you can get on to the next thing because that never ends. <laughs> you never get to the next thing because there's always a next thing to get to. But when your attention is in what you're doing now, then you can enjoy it. And when you're enjoying what you're doing now, you're living life to its fullest now, not at any fantasy time in the future that never comes. You're actually enjoying, you're building, you're, the building block of your life that you're creating in your now is one of enjoyment. And this dictates the quality of your life. <laughs> Let me see if anybody's getting this. Yes, it, it's mindfulness. M mindfulness is the practice of seeing the thoughts in your head. And that's a, thank you, by the way. Uh, mindfulness is, a, I think, more or less a Buddhist term. And it's uh, the uh, ability to step back and see the quality of thoughts that you're entertaining. Because your attention is not the thought. Your attention is on the thought. And being mindful is the realization of the quality of the thoughts that are going through your head and the realization that they're just thoughts and that you're actually in control of them. Because if you don't realize you're in control of your own thoughts, you're a prisoner. And most people are. They're prisoners to their own conditioned thinking patterns, which are extraordinarily limited, but still powerful in creating your sense of reality. Because when thought meets belief, it creates the world you see. When your thoughts meet with your belief, they manifest, the mind manifests the world that you see. You will only ever see in the world what you believe is there. You know, another great, and then I'm going to move on to the heavy stuff. Uh, another great form of sense, sensual, I'll call it sensual meditation, it, which would be the practice of putting your full attention into your senses, which is a surface, the surface of the now, um, is when you're eating something. When, when you're tasting food. Most people don't taste their food fully. Uh, I don't say most people, I'd say virtually everybody, but experiment with this and you don't even have to be stoned. <laughs> um, the next time you eat something, give the taste your full attention, full attention, your intense focus. It, 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 you'll taste things you never tasted before and you don't have to identify what they are. Well, there's the, oh, I taste parsley. Oh, it's too salty. I don't like the way this tastes. None of that matters because you don't like or dislike in this state. In the state of giving it your full attention, it's just a flavor. And that flavor deepens. And you can experience incredible um, joy in the, in the sensation of tasting your own food. <laughs> the, 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 the pleasure of food resonates, lights up parts of the brain, the same parts that light up during orgasms. Doesn't mean that next time you eat, you're gonna be squirting all over the place. <laughs> but <laughs> it definitely will bring you a sense of joy 
and enjoyment. And you can see it when you're when, when with some people who really are deep into and the same thing with your sense of smell. So imagine, just imagine a state of mind where what you're seeing, your attention is intensely in what you're seeing, but it's also, and this is something that happens as your presence deepens with this particular uh, form of meditation, you, some of that attention will then go to your ears. So now you're able to see and hear in a state of presence. This changes your world. And the, more, the longer you can hold it, the deeper it gets and the more, the more astonishing phenomenal uh, phenomenon becomes aware to you. Now imagine that in conjunction with feeling, if you're outside in nature and your, your, your ability to look is full blown, your ability to listen is full blown, which is very difficult. Um, and also your sense of feeling, which is the, it might be the wind on your face. It might be the clothes on your body. Um, and then also your ability to smell, especially in nature. It, it, it's, it, forests have incredible uh, aromas, various types, or even any place you are. You can, and then also your ability to hear is focused intensely. Your ability to see, taste, smell. You're lit up. You're one. You're you're one hundred percent lit in the present moment. This is your ultra zone. This is your natural state of being, although it's not known. Many people believe, and this is just my theory now, that we only use a small percentage of our brain, and that like five percent or something like that. But if we could open up the remaining part of our brain, we'd be so intelligent. We'd have all this knowledge of, you know, we'd have the ability to, to know more in the world. Well, I disagree. <laughs> I believe that the full capacity of the brain is to be lit up in a state of intense presence with all your senses firing on 100 all at the same time. That's a practice. That's a meditational practice. And no, I can't do that. <laughs> but I know it's possible. And that's what I strive for. Okay. Okay, now I'm, I'd like to talk a little bit about another form of meditation, which has to do more with the being aspect of who we are, as opposed to the doing. But first... So various types of meditational practices that you can gather and you can learn um, can be helpful. Uh, I would not say that there's one form of meditation that's, uh, that's, uh, that may be, uh, well, I would say there is probably a form, if you're interested in meditation, that is most appropriate for you. It may not be the one that I do or the ones that I do or the ones that somebody else does because everybody's at a different level of understanding and a different level of growth. And there's always people who are pulling you up and there's always people that you're pulling up, but you're always on your way up. And um, uh, so any, I would suggest researching various forms of meditation to see which one resonates with you the most. But now I'm going to I'm going to review some that might be helpful, and uh, so for instance, uh, now the kinds of meditation I'm going to be talking about now are the ones that bring your attention inside and not outside. This is the 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 doing, and now we're going to focus on the being, which is the highest form of meditation and yields vital results. This, this form of meditation um, is, is so, so important in your life. It, it could be the most important thing that you touch this zone because in it comes everything. 
And there's no way for me to illustrate that or prove it because it is an inside job that only you can do and only you can experience the results of. So various forms of meditation can be found. One that I might suggest researching, it might be um, something that resonates with you is transcendental meditation. This was something that was developed, um, I think it was back in the 60s and has become prevalent. Uh, I highly recommend checking out um, David Lynch. Uh, he has a website that teaches this. He is a pioneer of the um, incredible transformative effects that meditation practice has on our life in any situation. And he, he's a big proponent of that. And if you check out his site, TM, uh, there's ways to, uh, you know, the, the transcendental meditation usually re requires a teacher and there's a method involved. And it's, it's a form of uh, mantra meditation, mantra, a mantra is a phrase that you repeat in your head. And why do you do that? Because you give the mantra your attention to gather your attention in one area. So you may maybe, I don't, I don't know what you can use any word. Let's say I was to pick a word like, you pick a word like uh, uh, delight. I'm just a word. So this is a word delight, delight. And you're focusing on that word and then, the mind's going to pull you out of that and say, what are you doing? You got to go take care of business, man. Or this is just bullshit. Yeah. Okay. You did it for a minute already, you know, or it's going to say, are you almost done? Can we go now? <laughs> so this is the mind. And in the state of meditation, the mindful state of meditation, you see that that's what the mind is doing and you don't buy into it. Okay. I say, I'm going to let those thoughts go. So you go back to the mantra and that's the power of a mantra does not matter what words you say. There are no magical words. Uh, it's the, the, a mantra is like an object. Sometimes people use objects. Uh, candle meditation, where you just sit and stare at a candle, a flame, the flame of a candle. Uh, it's a meditative state. If you can give that candle flame your full attention. Um, so check out uh, TM. It might be something for you. Another great form of meditation that's as ancient as the Buddha, because he spoke of it, is your breath, breath meditation. And that's where you sit. And now a, a couple of things, just a couple of things, uh, 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 conventional things about meditation. You want to be comfortable. You want to be in a state of uh, relaxation. And you want to... Um, okay, well, some forms of meditation uh, require you to be incredibly still, your body and your mind, regardless of the kind of pain you may be going through. And I've experienced, I've experienced this in meditations two and a half hours, where after, after 15 minutes, well, after a few minutes, you have an itch. You know, and the mind's going, you have an itch, you better itch this. And yeah, it's fine if you just itch it, but it never stops because the mind is always going to be butting in saying, well, you got a little pain here. You got to, you got to do this. You got to do that. But this is also the form when, when meditating uh, is to allow the voice to say that, but don't pay any attention to it. So the itch burns, but then it goes away. The pain in the legs after 20 minutes of sitting cross-legged starts to really kick in. After 40 minutes, the pain is excruciating, but you have to relax into it. And then after a while, an odd thing happens. The pain becomes comfortable. Um, it, it, it dissipates and it becomes something else. It turns into something else. It turns into presence in your body. Uh, you, because you, you, it's one of the ways that you can take your attention out of the body and into your um, awareness is through this pain. I know that sounds like a paradox, 
but it's a meditational practice if you want to experiment with it. It's not necessary these kinds of restrictions that people put on themselves to experience pain, to reach meditative states, is a form of an austerity of sorts, and also a, um, an object that pushes them into the state of presence, because the pain becomes so great, uh, you have to go through it. You, you pierce through it. Uh, and you can do that with your attention. That's not pleasant, but uh, once you get through it, there is no pain. There's just presence. So this is if you're interested in those types of meditations that require you to sit very still for long periods of time and not move. Um, but uh, this breathing meditation is the, is the process of sitting relaxed and putting your attention on your breathing. Now, a lot of people may uh, assume that what that means is you're becoming, you're be, you, you're, you do your breathing. You, 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 you kind of engage in the action of breathing. This is not what it is. Giving your attention to your breathing means just that, your body is doing the breathing. You're not breathing your lungs. You're not beating your heart. You're not uh, doing the myriad things that the body is doing to keep its balance. Can you just put your, your awareness on how your body is breathing itself? And can you follow with your attention every little breath that goes in and out and feel every aspect of the breathing and hold your attention there. This was the, I believe it was a, a meditation that the Buddha taught. And I think he actually stated that if you can hold your attention there for one full hour, uh, you've reached enlightenment. Uh, uh, but if you mess up, you got to start over. <laughs> sort of sounds like a couple of guitar exercises I have. <laughs> uh, but in any event, uh, when you are sitting there in this meditation and you're able to hold your attention on, the, on your breathing, you'll see the mind will come in with a thought. You let it go. So the mind comes in with a thought. Sometimes it'll drag you right out, right out. And next, you won't even realize that you've, you, you, you've been hijacked into a realm of stories in your head that are not part of your meditation. They're, that's your ego. The ego has gotten a hold, and it's send, saying things like, no, you have to think about this now. This is important. If you don't figure this out, everything's going to fall apart. Forget this meditation shit. Um, if th that's when you have, to, you have to forgive that. Forgive that voice and, and let it pass. It'll be there later when you're done meditating, if you want it. One of the greatest obstacles in meditation is psychological time. And what is psychological time? Psychological time is your belief in time. It's your projection into the future. When you're feeling the feeling of impatience, that's psychological time. In reality, there's no time except the one that you create that humans create in their mind. Time is a concept that needs to be transcended in the form of med in, in the state of meditation. And it is because in the true sense of, med of a meditative state, there is, there's no time. There, there's no thinking of time. There's just what is in this moment. And these various meditational practices can bring you there. So the breathing meditation is one that may resonate with some people. What you're doing is taking control of your life when you do this, you're because you're taking control of your focus. You're allowing thoughts to come and you're recognizing them and you're not buying into them and they're going away and you're in the state, you're, you're allowing true reality to uh, become apparent to you. 
Another great meditation is the inner body meditation. And this is where you take your attention and you put it in the energy stream of your inner body. This is one that I learned from Eckhart Tolle, where he says, focus on your hands. Many great videos from Eckhart. Explains it much better than me. Highly recommend checking it out. It may or may not resonate with you. If not, that's fine. Something else will. But the concept, that's not a concept, but uh, the practice is to take your attention and put it into your hands and to feel, feel you. It's sort of like feeling your hands from the inside and you hold it there. Remember, you're the boss of the focus. That's the object of meditation is to hold your focus. And the deeper you can hold this focus, you can do this right now, the, the, the more attention you put into your hands, the more you feel your hand, you feel the energy field in your hands. It's, it's sort of like a, it's, it's a tingling, but it's not a tingling. It's sort of like an expansion. They start to feel like they're growing. And then you take that attention and you move it throughout your body into your arms, into your face. You re we start to realize how much tension we hold in our face, in our shoulders. It's the melting away of stress when you give your attention to your inner body. You can lay there and actually give your entire body, your the inner energy field of your entire body, your full attention. And this is a miraculous thing to do. It brings great relief. Your body loves it. And this is how your body heals. This is how it can actually heal from anything. Because your body has all the tools it needs to heal from anything. The only thing ever obstructing its ability to do that is the quality of the thoughts that you have in your mind, which is resonating through your body and creating a state of emotional stress in your body, which your body has to, it's an obstruction to, for your body's ability to function in its most perfect, beautiful state. Your body is an incredibly fine-tuned chemistry lab. It can deal with almost anything, but it cannot deal with your negative thinking. <laughs> so in this state of full body awareness, this feeling of, of, um, Being completely connected to this energy field in your body, it transforms into a state of just awareness. That's, that's meditation. It, you, you're not aware of your body. You're aware of the, ener the energy field that you've um, that you've gravitated to and held on to grows and it just becomes your full awareness. And this is a lovely meditation and it heals. It heals the mind, which heals the body. It's important to see that connection because it's a catchphrase otherwise. If it's only heal, you know, if you're just, if you, if you hear the catchphrase, heal the mind, heal the body and not really understand the connection that the mind has with the body, those are meaningless words. There's another form of meditation. It's one that I've adopted quite intensely uh, that I learned from an Eastern practice called Sant Mat. And uh, it's a pretty intense meditation. And it there's certain aspects of it that I can talk about. But it, it starts as a form of a mantra meditation. There's words that are repeated. And the object is to bring your full attention into your eye center, which is the center of your consciousness, the center of your awareness. And you bring your attention. This is a very high form of meditation. You bring your full attention there, whether it's hearing, you're hearing on the inside. Now there's no more outside world stuff. This is inner meditation. What you're focusing on is your awareness itself. And when this happens, 
it deepens. And I'm not at liberty to discuss some of the experiences that can happen as you venture into these inner worlds. But one of the, th the things I can say are when in this meditative state of bringing your full attention into your eye center, into the zone of attention, that is who you really are, uh, thought forms still come and go. Remember, this is all about recognizing thought forms and pushing past them, going through them, regardless of what those thoughts are. They, can, they start out as just thoughts in your head, and the process of meditation is in recognizing them and letting them go and staying focused. What happens when you, what can happen when you go deep in the inside with your attention, your thoughts create images inside, thought forms. This also happens when we dream. Um, and they can be intense. They can be really intense. Uh, they can be beautiful and they can be scary. They can be ridiculous and they can be overwhelming. Or they can, but they're, they're, the important thing is just like in the subterranean inside world of your mind, how you have to kind of go past it. You have to go past these visuals that you may be confronted with in deep meditation that are a product of your mind creating images in front of you that you might believe are real, <laughs> um, but they're not. And uh, they can seem very real. Uh, but by bringing the attention back to the eye center every time, uh, they dissolve instantly. They have to dissolve because you're your, when your attention is at your eye center or when your attention is within yourself, it's not on these visual scenarios, these tapestries of sometimes incredibly beautiful, profoundly beautiful things that are easy to be deterred by. So that's a very high form of meditation. But I, I'm not... Um, uh, really at liberty to teach it in the formal way. But if it sounds like something that's interesting, that was what I learned from Sant Mat. Uh, it requires, to get the proper form of that meditation, requires a, uh, an initiation. Uh, it's a commitment. It's a commitment. Um, see, um, check out some of your comments right now. I, I hope this is working for you guys, or some of you. <laughs> Journey to the center of your mind, yes. Howdy, Mr. Vi. Hi. <laughs> Can you translate that experience into a song? Uh, all the time. Matter of fact, the Passion and Warfare, that whole record, well, I'll get to that some other time. I still have one uh, meditational practice I want to explore with you guys. Yes, accessible meditation practice for the guitar. So many of you that are tuning in still are musicians, perhaps. It's interesting because if you go to some kind of a spiritual talk uh, with uh, somebody that's known for doing those kinds of things, usually the people there are open and ready and they know what they're going to get. <laughs> in this forum, uh, I know your interests are, are, are mainly music, and guitar and these kinds of things. And um, I definitely want to always try to bring these things back to how they can be helpful for you uh, as a musician, as a creative, artistic person, because uh, that is uh, your function in the world. That, and, and the quality of that function, the quality of your ability to do all those things that you're asking, how do I do this? It is all joined at the hip with your ability to focus, with your ability to take command, to be the boss of, to be the master of. That's what a master is. A master is a person that is able to master their focus on something without any bullshit, without any 
deterrent without any fears because they realize there's no there's no fear when you're when when you're following your bliss there's no fear there's no feeling of inadequacy there's no feelings of of uh, unworthiness these are your obstacles and meditation melts them away because meditation is the process of seeing the uh, the illusory nature of these thoughts you have that are bullshit that are holding you back that are that are cutting at the root of your ability to be the most powerful you that you can be do i sound like tony robbins <laughs> in any event i'm serious i'm very passionate about this and and i want you to be too because it's you it, 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 you it's your birthright to own your focus it is your birthright it is your absolute purpose to take control of your focus and when you do that there are those obstacles mean nothing they are they they are seen as unnecessary mental thoughts they're unnecessary and this is what meditation can help with okay let's see what some of you are commenting yes joseph campbell follow your bliss fantastic that's where i learned that phrase okay so um there is one more thing I'd like to try with you guys before I let you go to, to meditate. <laughs> and that's uh, sort of like a guided meditation. Okay. So I don't know if some of you have heard of Muji, M-O-O-J-I. Muji is a spiritual teacher. Absolutely fantastic. Some spiritual teachers have the ability to bring you into presence. And that state of presence is the spiritual dimension. It's surrounding you at all times. It's there. And when you're able to reach it, you're in your natural state. And Muji is fantastic at bringing you there. He calls it the invitation. And I've seen him do this many times. I'm, I'm, I highly recommend going and checking him out, but I'm, but I'm going to kind of... do my best to show you or to bring you into this meditative state the best I can. Uh, and it goes something like this. This is Muji's invitation seen through the screen of the eyes of Steve I. Okay, a couple of preambles to that. It, it, uh, if some people are relatively turned off even by the word spirituality or universe or any of these things uh god love you know a lot of times that the, they they don't get it religion it doesn't resonate with them but it's important to know that the waking up process is not privy to a particular group of people it happens to every any it can ha, it can happen to anybody at any time it can happen to an aborigine living uh, in a, in a world that they have no contact with the western world but at some point they went like this you could be a businessman working on wall street and you can have that shift you can make that connection you can be a monk who's been meditating for 50 years and can make that connection or not. You could be a child in grammar school in China or any place in the world. It, spiritual waking up is not, you don't need to know even anything about spirituality. You don't ever have to read a book you, you have it all already. It's already there. You were born with it. It's who you really are. Um, 
a lot of times books and research can be helpful, but the the waking up process can happen to anybody at any time. They just need to be ready. They just have to be ready. And if you're ready, you will uh, make this, these things will make sense to you and you'll discover that dimension inside of you. So the invitation, just give me one moment. Okay. Um, for those of you who are just tuning in, this is Steve Vai, and this is Under It All, and I'm talking about various meditational techniques. I'm also having some more coffee. In the beginning of my discussion, I was talking about the two basic realities the false sense of reality that is unique to each one of us and is actually unique to every creature on the planet. And dog has a different sense of reality than a human. And also a dog has a different sense of reality than another dog. And but insect and a tree, any living thing, has some kind of sense of reality. Uh, very difficult to imagine what that is, but there, it's a living thing. Uh, but it's different than anything else like it or anything. And that sense of reality is sort of an egoic screen, and it's unique to you. Your sense of reality is unique to you. And the process of meditation is to find the true sense of reality, which is under or deeper than, or above, it doesn't matter, there's actually no such thing as direction in reality, uh, it's there in you, it's who you are. And the process of meditation is to discover this true sense of reality of who you are. And it requires you to abandon all thoughts about yourself, all conditioned preconceived ideas and images about you, that you have about you, that you have about the world, or that you have about anything else. So the invitation sort of sounds something like this. Your egoic perspective of the world is based on what you believe is real. So for a moment, for this meditational practice, we're going to take all of that and just put it aside. We're going to put it just aside right now, as if you're walking into a room and uh, you're being invited into a room, but you're being requested to first take your name, which that's one of the biggest obstacles is the belief that who we are is our name, that the fact that a sound coming out of your mouth can describe who you are, that's insanity, it doesn't, it can't, it will never come close. <laughs> it's a symbol for something. Uh, so let's take your name and create a bag out of it. And what you're going to do just for now, this is the, the guided meditation, just for now, just take, take that bag and put in it any thought that you have of the future. Any thought, all the thoughts that you have about the dreams, the fantasies you have, all the, all the, the fears that you have about what's going to happen, especially now with this, what's going to happen with this disease? Am I going to get it? Am I, what's going to happen with my finances? All of these things, you're going to just take those for a moment. Just, just, just put them aside. You're going to put them in the bag. Put them in the bag. Okay. So now there's, there's no, there's no future. Okay. You just, it'll be there when you, all of those things will be there when you come back if you want them. But for this moment, we're preparing to create an opening. So you just leave those things there. And you also take all of your thoughts of the past. Any kinds of thoughts that you have about yourself, the world, the people around you, just for a moment, you're going to take all those thoughts and you're just going to put them in the bag. All those thoughts about what happened yesterday, all those thoughts about what that person did to me, what I did back when I was so-and-so, 
how could they have done that? How could I have done that? That's why I can't do anything now because of what, okay, so that's, that's what I'm referring to. You could just take all that just for a moment and just put it aside. You put it in the bag. So you're taking psychological time and you're forgiving it just for this moment, just, just for a moment. Who are you right now? You are the aware presence. In this state, you discover that you're, you're not your body, who you actually are. And this is the depth of meditative meditation is it's, it's embracing that mental state of pure, it's not a mental state, it's embracing the dimension of awareness, of pure awareness. Hang on one second. It's, it's embracing that state. I was very aware when I answered the phone, by the way. <laughs> okay. So you're just embracing that state of the present moment. You don't need to think of your name. It'll be there when you come back. You don't need to think of your past. You don't need to think of the future. You're entering the vertical dimension of time, which is right now. And you're discovering who, what you really are, that what you really are is, it's formless. It's for your attention. You're, you're, you're the, what you are is the light of the world. Jesus said that. He said, I am the light. And he said, you are the light of the world. And he meant it. He really meant it. Your ability, not, not the light like the light that's shining on me or the light from the sun, not that light. You're the awareness that enables the world to exist. And when you discover that, you discover the truth of who you are. And you discover that who you are, it's not even of this world. It's not, there's nothing in this world that can actually touch. Is there anything, is there anything in the world that can touch your awareness? No, it can't. Is there, is there fear in this awareness? No, because fear is a thought. Is there past and future? No. Is there sickness? No. Your awareness cannot get sick. Your body can get sick. But your awareness cannot get sick. <laughs> your awareness is the one thing in your life that has been there that has never changed. If you look back through your whole life, you'll notice you'd be able to look back at, on, on the life you had when you were a child and it changed. And then there was the life you had as a 10 year old or a 15 year old and all of the various things that were happening in that life. It's almost, they're, they're almost like past lives in a sense. They're memories now. They don't exist anymore. This is obvious, but they are, um, they're, they're mental thought forms at some point, not reality, because they, they're continually changing. And if you notice, if you, if you just back up a little bit and look at your entire life, everything in it is, has been constantly changing and is constantly changing right now. It's never not been changing. Everything that you can possibly see, feel, taste, touch through your translative senses, the, the senses that are translating things, is always changing. There, it's coming and going. Everything in your world is coming and going. There, there's, there's, there, this experience right now, come and go. What happened yesterday 
came and went. Uh, people in your life are going to come and go. They're going to be people are going to be born and people are going to pass away. And if they don't, that only means you passed away before them. You went before them or you left them or whatever it is. If you notice, everything has been constantly changing in your life. Because the world you're looking at is being seen through a, a unreal, a pseudo form of reality. And that's the nature of the external world is constant change. You can never find your sense of stability, your sense of security, your sense of home, your sense of absolute uh, power, your sense of confidence, your sense of independence. You will never find your sense of happiness, of freedom, of joy, of creative freedom, of co-creative freedom, of, of clarity, clarity. You, you, these things can never be found in the world because there's nothing in the world that is the same from one minute to the next. And that's been the case for your entire life. And it's been the case forever. But there is one thing that hasn't changed. There is one thing that's remained constant through your entire life. And you can prove this to yourself. You're, the, 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 and what this thing is, is it's, it's your attention. It's the light that uh, you are. It's the awareness that you are. This is the hardest thing to explain. And it's the one thing that the, all of the great avatars, spiritual teachers through history, including Jesus and Buddha and all of them have been trying to explain. And uh, even today, there's all the great spiritual teachers are teaching the same thing, just different ways, just different words. And what that thing is, is who you are is not of this world. Who you are is infinite intelligence. Who you truly are is awareness itself. And it hasn't, it doesn't change. No, it can't change. It knows. It just is. It's the isness. There's no form to it. It can't be touched by anything in the world. It's inviolate. Uh, this discovery is your purpose in life. It's the greatest discovery that a human being can make because it brings you the foundation of security that you've been seeking in the outside world that you can never find out there. And wh what it is, is it's, it's who you are. It's what you actually are, are. awareness, the light, the, the, the thing that enables even thoughts to appear, the thing that um, enables you, that has been there when you have been seeing all the different experiences in your life, through your life, that have been changing. The thing that's looking into the world the, the most fundamental sense of I am is who you are. And when you discover this, that's freedom. That's, that's called liberation. And uh, because you discover the inviolate nature, the indestructible nature of who you are, the timeless nature. So, This state of being can be lived in at all time, meaning the state of awareness, which is who you are, when embraced, connects you to the flow of life. And then life flows through you beautifully. And I can, I can talk for a long time about this. And maybe I will talk more in the future. Um, I am a practitioner myself. These things I talk about uh, are things that I've discovered through the teachings of great people. Much more um, able to express them. But then again, everybody is at a different stage and perhaps some of the things I reviewed here can be helpful. 
Uh, so one of the few more things I would say about meditation is one of the most important things about meditation, meditating is to bring uh, the meditative experience into your daily life. This is where you find the balance between the being, the being, which is the deepest sense of meditation, which is the focus on your own sense of awareness, which deepens and takes you into realms of reality that I am not able to talk, I'm not able to find the words for, at least now I'm not. Uh, but um, some of the aspects of meditation in bringing that into your, nor into your everyday life, many people believe that if I was to do this, how would I function? How can I, how can I do things if I'm not thinking about what to do? Uh, they believe that they would just be sitting on a log someplace and doing nothing. But this is not the case because when you're connected to the flow of the creative impulse of the universe, actions happen through you naturally and organically, instinctually. What you're doing when you're creating an opening in your thinking and allowing your, your creative nature to flow through you, you, you are in essence um, allowing the creative impulse of the universe work through you in the most beautifully unique way that's absolutely perfect for you and for your contribution, whatever that may be. Now, the ego might tell you that your contributions are small, they're useless, they don't make a difference, they're not cool, they're not part of the thing that's needed to make you feel fulfilled in the world. Uh, because of the, then everybody will know how great you are and all these things. These, um, these thoughts are at the root of your suffering because your actual function in life that is organic and is enjoyable and uh, expansive for you is happening through you, but it's the, the quality of them is being obstructed by your belief that they're unworthy. So in the meditative state of moving around, in the state of presence, in the things that you do, there is the appreciation that you have for doing them. That flows into whatever it is you do. It doesn't matter what you do. The universe isn't keeping score and saying, you're a famous guitar player, so you're more important. It doesn't, that, that is completely irrelevant. And this you see through meditation because we are, we're all working together. We need each other in a co-creative way for anything to happen, anything. Just sitting around here, being able to make this podcast, or whatever it is, <laughs> is the work of it required everybody. <laughs> It's hard to see, but it did. It required everybody that ever lived to make this possible. And I am contributing to things that you're doing, maybe not in ways that are very obvious, but they're there. So in so when you find this state of your own natural expression, this is a very joyful state. Then you found your purpose, which you're actually your function. And uh you start to um, recognize certain things, such as the foundation of the universe is infinite abstract freedom. This is obvious. Uh, the action of the universe is expansion. It's obvious. And the reason is joy. It may not be so obvious until you understand the first two. But you do know the truth of this because you can feel it inside of you, even just by me mentioning it, because you are the universe. You have inf the infinite potential to think any thought you want, right? Can, can you deny that? Is it possible to deny the fact that you have the freedom to think any thought you want? Even the thought that you can't do that. <laughs> Is the, is, the, is the use of it. 
there is no thought, there is no limitation to the thoughts that you're capable of thinking. That's, that's just true. Uh, the action that you take in the world is that of expansion, of expanding the universe. Because when you think a thought, an action can come. I'm, re I'm, re I'm referring to inspired creative thoughts that feel natural and organic to you. Action comes from that. And then anything you do in the world, you are expanding the universe. <laughs> uh, it will never be the same. And when you are experiencing the inspiration of your highly creative thoughts and then expressing them effortlessly, seamlessly into the world, that's joy. <laughs> it's like real joy. And it requires you doing it with uh, everybody. There's so much more I would love to talk about. I don't, I don't know how you're holding up. But uh, I hope this was helpful. And uh, so now you, some of you who may have stuck around get a bit of an idea of what our Thursday Under It All sessions are. Don't know how long I'm going to be doing this. It's a, it's, it's a little bit of a challenge for me. Um, but I, I, I enjoy it. And also I enjoy our Tuesday sessions at noon where I play a little bit and I talk about guitar. And I love your questions. Please keep them coming. Uh, you can go as deep as you want with the questions. I'll do my best. But try to uh, separate them from mus music-oriented guitar music questions for alien guitar secrets and anything more personal uh, and esoteric, let's say, for under it all. So wrapping up on meditation, uh, experiment with it. Find the one that's good for you. The process may be different, but the, but the goal is the same. And the highest goal of meditation is to bring you to the realization of the truth, the truth, the absolute truth of who you really are. And uh, this does not even require any belief. It requires no belief. And a matter of fact, it requires no belief. You have to put all beliefs aside and uh, this will change the quality of your life. It'll change the things you bring into this world. It will change your effect on everybody around you. It will change the way you see the world. And you deserve this. It's your birthright. You're worthy of it. Nothing else will do for you. Nothing else will work but pure, absolute, 100% freedom. Nothing will be good enough, nothing else. You may try to find it in the world, but you'll fail, and it'll cause suffering and misery in your own mind because you're looking for something outside of yourself that doesn't exist. In reality, there is nothing outside of you. That's another episode, perhaps. But um, I hope this has been helpful, uh, and I appreciate you tuning in. And... If things go well, we'll see you Tuesday for Alien Guitar Secrets. So thank you guys so much, and see you around.